Hi there. Hi, Focus Vip. So today, before I begin the development, <clears throat> today I have a tough day because I have to develop the AI or to be more specific, I have to develop the pathfinding and make the entities uh, able be able to f uh, follow you everywhere. Um, before I do that, I have some notes. Uh, so yesterday night, I was looking on Twitch and I found uh, this interesting streamer called Art of Mana and he was streaming an old game uh, he was playing on uh, Super Nintendo I think he was streaming directly from the device or something like that but what captured my attention is the the games that you can play on that uh, device and the fact that he was playing a game called secret of mana and what i liked about this game is uh besides the fact that it has a top-down perspective <coughs> which is really nice and it's an rpg uh it has some cool features and uh advanced features for a game released in 93 so i looked up and it has a really big manual it has 65 pages and one interesting feature in this game is I'll show you in a bit is the ring of command ring of commands so basically every time you play this game you can pause it and this ring will appear just like in modern games uh, you have the ability to pause or to slow down time and uh, make some decisions I think this is an interesting pattern in a game where because not every player uh, can take decisions fast and some people are just casual players and like to pause the game from time to time to think about what they are going to do next and this pattern I think is really interesting um, yeah and I thought this was extremely cool by the way this guy is uh, has a really chill stream uh, and he he streams things that uh, are family safe and he also uh, talks really nice and comments uh, on his gameplay so I suggest if you are interested maybe follow this guy <coughs> now a cool feature that I've saw in, in that I've seen in this game is the way hit points drop on the floor and for that I think I'm gonna search on YouTube Focus Whip, I don't understand what Tori is saying, so you make this game for web. Uh, you're referring to this one, the one that I'm working on? Yes, this is working on web, but I'm not going to release it for, uh, for web. I'm gonna package it uh, and release it as an exe file on Steam and possibly GOG, GOG.
and later maybe make it an online game depending on um, the way I license it and the way I uh, and how much money I make out of it. Yes, JS app for desktop, yes. So I'm gonna package it in an Excel file and the f at least the first episode of this game will be released like that. Uh, I don't care on releasing it for the web or for mobile at the moment, even if the game works on mobile devices and it has, uh, it works uh, with touch, but I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so back to what I was saying about the art of mana. So, um, sorry, the secret of mana. Uh, I'm going to show you something interesting here. The way, did you see that? The way, the way the hit points, the way the points are dropping on the floor, I really like that. I think I'm going to implement that as well. I really like that. I really like the way this game is done. Has done, has achieved this, uh, this kind of visuals. Yep. Okay, so today I also, before starting the development, I also wanted to discuss about my favorite dinosaurs, dinosaur games. Uh, first one is Sorian. So. My only problem with this game is that so far um, it only has uh, released like a major patch and since uh, I think since a month ago uh, it's been almost I mean it's more it's been a month since they didn't release anything I think they had some issues the developer, one of the developers had uh, some personal issues. Uh, let me fix this. But the problem with early access games, just like the Isle, which is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite games, uh, dinosaur games so far, is that they don't have a release schedule published somewhere, and they don't and they keep that hidden from people be because they don't want to generate hype. I can understand that, but I think uh, they should be forced by St St Steam to provide a. Uh, at least some sort of uh, some sort of roadmap. Of, of course, roadmaps change, especially in early access games that are indie developed. So let me see what you have written here. Start this game. Yes, I know about startup company. Um, I'm on uh, Jonas' uh, Discord, and I I got a lot of ideas from him. Um, he's done really good with the game so far uh, with the startup company. Okay, so uh, back to the dinosaur games. The problem is that developers are not transparent with what they are doing and maybe because they they don't know also what they are doing maybe 
in a sense that they don't have a schedule or they don't have big budgets so they cannot actually really 100% commit to something but I believe this should be changed on Steam in order to encourage uh, to encourage transparency transparency with uh, with the customers that's all what I'm asking for so far because what I've noticed is on both uh, uh, forums if you go and uh, read the discussions they are repeating themselves so this is because new people keep coming uh, into the game they buy the game and they keep asking the same questions and there's no unified region on steam where you can post faqs of course there's the store uh, uh, front page but i realized that uh, extremely few people read the description of the games and uh, this cannot encompass all the questions that come up during the development of a game so yeah this this is a problem anyway um, I just want to I just wanted to share with you another thing on uh, Kickstarter there is a campaign for Beasts of Bermuda these guys are making uh, a dinosaur game a really cool one they also have a demo prepared you can download it you can also see other youtubers playing it and you can join their their discord in order to follow the progress they are really cool guys and uh, most of them are uh, from the isle community and they decided to create their own game and i think this is a really nice project uh, the project i believe it needs at least 35 grand i think it uh, from what i've discussed with the the creator of the game i truly believe this game needs more than 35 grand because uh, you have to also optimize the network code and all the issues that come with uh, new assets but nevertheless if you're interested in supporting dinosaur games please do support this project because it's really nice and it's made by people who actually really 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 care about what they're doing and they achieved the uh, uh, they achieved really uh, good results so far without any funding okay so I think that's enough from my part discussing other games it's time to go back to my stuff so we have four stories on our board right now it's uh, there are did I th did I say three stories four stories on on the board um, normally I should have had this one with the pathfinding but I, I need to finish these ones so let's do these ones and then we'll uh, go back to the pathfinding I also activated the pathfinding but it doesn't work at the moment it doesn't uh, the response so the calculations are not uh, going back to the dino NPC he's right now he can follow me but when he hits a wall he's not following the path that uh, is given to him so 
in a Kanban style of working, I would say let's first do the what we have on the, uh, the board and then move forward. I think the easiest one is add shadow to the bomb sprite. shadow to the bomb sprite okay I need to recycle this this work okay I think it's going to work but I need to make it I think it needs to be smaller maybe or maybe not let's see how it, it looks in game and then we'll take another decision so at the moment in but this in this major milestone of the game the shadows would will be are embedded with the model but in the future version the shadows will be different entities uh, I'm a programmer and a sound composer uh, not a designer so what I did is uh, uh, worked with multiple designers and uh, I chose the right design or at least what I thought that is the best design for my game and I'm paying a designer a pixel artist uh, and he's really really good at what he's doing but I forgot to mention to him to add shadows to the bomb so I don't mind adding it myself here so I'm just learning how to manage the sprites and the relationship with the designer. I've worked with designers in the past but not in gaming projects. So this is why I uh, in the first encounters encounters with him I requested a lot of crap of a lot of things that I I've I couldn't implement. That's uh, that's my, um, my mistake. I'm just a programmer, man. And uh, the sound, I'm doing the sound myself, but maybe at some point I will also pay for a soundtrack. But at, at this moment, I can do it myself. Okay, I think that works. Yep, it's Bomberman. It's a combination of my two of my favorite games. It's uh, Bomberman and uh, Prehistoric. If you ever played Prehistoric with the caveman eating the food. 
I love the simplicity of both Bomberman and prehistoric uh, concepts. They are extremely easy to grasp by anyone and this game is intended main, mainly for kids. Get right After of the region, we'll see that. I, I think I fixed it. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it. What did I do? I think I refactored something in the safe zone. Yeah, so I refactored the safe zone. Although I don't really necessarily like the way I did it. But this is no time for optimizations right now. Okay. This is done. So Focus VIP, are you working on any games? Are you working on something? Random free tile from area. Okay. I started developing uh, this game just for fa fun and I hope to keep that fun aspect for a long time so I need a free tile but I need it from an area how do I get a free tile from an area like this one I see. I understand you with the motivation. I have uh, colleagues at work which are far better than me at programming and computer science and they lack motivation. They, they earn a lot of money but they, they lack motivation. Maybe because of that or I don't know. But I understand you. Uh, motivation comes from various reasons. You'll find uh, motivation at some point doing things that you like. 
get free time is condition time. How do I do this? This should be a calculation. Well, JavaScript uh, ecosystem is kind of bloated right now. Although there ha have been great, uh, ha there have been made uh, great uh, progress in the JavaScript world. I think there's a lot of bloat uh, in the ecosystem, like tools, a lot of tools that do the same thing. But you could start just learning Canvas like this. Just learn to draw a couple of images, shapes. I'm not sure if I have here my first attempt. There was a simple game, it has only like 100 line of code, maybe, maybe simpler than that. And that was the trigger for me, I saw a game in browser that was uh, made with, uh, in, with cam canvas and the, the player was enclosed in a area like this one and he had to go grab different things and there was a score and it was a pretty simple concept but it uh, it drew me in uh, okay so back to the problem at hand I get all the pixels in this area <laughs> but in my case I, I don't need all the pixels I just need the um, oh it's easier than I thought I just spliced the array I just spliced the array Holy crap, it might be easier than I thought. <clears throat> okay, so let's open a map. Easier than I th than I thought. Get tiles from region.
Melon juice, I don't know about that. From Red Mars. Red Mars? Red. I honestly didn't knew about this. Melon Jess. I should check this out. Okay, sorry about that. So the sound was too too loud. Melon GS, a fresh lightweight game engine. Nice, thanks for sharing this. I will look into this. <clears throat> I think I forgot that this existed. Entity font loader math math. I'm curious about math observer vector vector math matrix. Okay, so I see they still using classic JavaScript, which is okay. They have an API which is good. This is singleton. Viewport world. TMX group, this is from Tiled, I guess. Have some predefined callbacks. Quite to clear or destroy. Okay, update frame Okay. Game pads. They have support for game pads. Actually, I just get got a gamepad, so I might borrow things from here. If this license is MIT, I could uh, borrow something. Wired Xbox normalize function. Interesting. I have uh, an Xbox uh, gamepad. Okay. I see they have some tweaking here. Oh, and they also have mappings for each type of controller. Interesting. I don't need mappings because maybe I will need, but I only need for Chrome because I will compile the game with chrome okay. Me, and publish. the 
they have like a global thing yes the API so hmm this is smart so you you have the API as a dependency injection I never thought of that like that but I think this is okay oh and I see they 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 also have pointer I guess for touch events for every kind of events yeah a pointer Hmm, interesting. I have the same issue. So when when registering an event, they are referring back to the renderer. Uh, oh, so they add the event to the canvas, not to the whole document. <coughs> That's interesting. That's interesting, yes. Okay, let's see how they do the entities. Entity collector entity. Okay, I would like to see the renderable. But before that, let's see, init X, Y settings. Good children. I will have children in the future because I want to render the shadows uh, separately. And this is a good, this is a good way to declare your dependencies or yeah or your subclasses super and uh, okay let's define oh so they are fully based on tiled the way tiled describes the entity distance to point get bounds blah 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 angle to these are really useful uh, methods I don't know why they exist on entity but I also have a couple of these because I need the angle uh, the dis distance at least Pre-draw, yeah, this is smart. You need to pre-draw something always uh, at when the game is uh, initiating. And then draw, they also can render on WebGL, in a WebGL context. Oh, they have a pre-draw and post-draw, I see. So they are translating stuff and then maybe restore them later. They don't seem to be messing with the context that ma much. Or maybe it's inside the render. Nice. I will save this for later. And these games I will look offline. Come on. Thanks for 
thanks for uh, giving me those. I will study them. Back to the problem at hand. So get tiles from region. I need to know what region and then splice uh, based on the part uh, based on. So I want to splice my array. Let's do it here in browser. So you have an array like this. I want to splice it from one to. No, I want to splice it from fifth position and to two elements. Fifth position. Let me see how splice works. I always forget how this works. Changes the changes the content of an array by removing existing. I don't want to change. I just want to return another array. Returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array. This is what I need. So slice from beginning to end. Okay, so I need slice. Five, which is one, two, three, four, five, four, two, uh, five to seven. Yes. <coughs> okay, so. Regions, regions. Uh, wait, if I'm slicing it, I'm only solving part of the problem, so. Yes, in the settings I have tile width, total tiles, and region within pixels. No, region within tiles. This is something that can help me calculate this. setting here region within tiles region heighting heighting tiles and Cache. 
region total tiles I have this I just have to add it to the interface Based on the region, I know how many tiles to know how many tiles to remove. So I'll do region minus one. Oh no, minus one. I will do a plus one. Plus one, because you because you can have region zero. Okay, so four. let's have some fun with this. Actually, get times from region. I will do turn. There's collision tiles slice from Why don't we have some fun with this actually? Let's see what we get from this. No, no, no. I choose. I chose uh, TypeScript because of uh, uh, the static code analysis and the fact that I didn't have to bother writing ES5 or ES6 or ES7 or whatever flavored code. 
So TypeScript allows me to transpile my code to whatever version I want. I could have used classes anyway because they are just syntactic sugar to objects to the way you create objects in to the prototype actually and I could have used them because I'm targeting the latest Chrome but I also need the static analysis because as you know JavaScript is a weekly typed language and <clears throat> TypeScript helps me a lot in detecting errors and also working with interfaces which are uh, transparent to the code they don't uh, get uh, in the final output of the build because JavaScript doesn't have interfaces and working by the contract is something that I'm uh, familiar with And that eases my development a lot. Finding errors, finding typing errors like this one. Hey, you you said that the output is an array of numbers, but you didn't return an array of numbers. This kind of thing. Uh, the first version of this game was the first uh, demo of this game was actually done in JavaScript in ES5 syntax but uh, I ran into troubles when the code base became bigger so let's get a random actually no this is good. This is good, and I will provide another method. Get random type sure, no problem. Uh, I don't have. I I don't have a bot. I used to have one, but yeah, it's easy. You just search galley from hell and you'll see the content. I mainly have videos, compilation videos from the time I played the Isle. If you know the game, really cool game. Yeah, I have to update that info because I think I still have some reference about bots there. But I'm not using uh, bots anymore. I think they are too distracting. way too distracting for me yeah, yeah yeah I have to update that thanks for pointing that out crap pose yourself where is that here somewhere. No excessive overlays. Well, <laughs> 
what can I say? I have some overlays right now. I'm not sure if they are excessive. So I'll remove this. No alerts. Yeah, unfortunately, so far I don't have alerts. But I plan to have them, so... Music... I'm using... I'm not using your chat anymore. sure I'm doing something creepy here uh, but we'll see I'm doing something that I shouldn't do I know for once that this calculation is not correct but we'll see what the result what uh, the result uh, is and maybe have fun with it a little bit for a little bit okay so if not region this one because I don't care right now about clean code chat font a little bit smaller maybe smaller okay okay and let's play with the with the API so Didn't work 
as you expected. Let's do a debug. not good get random free no get random tile from region yielded undefined so let's see We want the tiles from region 6 and we got no freaking tiles. This to oh crap, I'm an idiot. Tile index zero, which is not good. Okay, I think I missed on some other calculations here. It will just add a dinosaur here in the in the corner. Let's see, so we get the tiles from the region. Get down 
that's from region. How do I slice without losing entries? No, wait. So, how do I slice? How do I return a part of an array? Uh, <coughs> Obviously, I need the keys in these keys. Reduce. Does reduce skips the So I guess I will end up using something like uh, a map or something. Because I need a new array. Yeah. 
clearly I will use this. Okay, get tiles from region. Actually, this is, <clears throat> I think this is easier if I just pick a random value from that range. So I do something like from two and then we do a random of these ones and then we pick the specific value from this one and then we take the value from this one Tile index is zero again. the random tile one thousand 
zoom down 50. Which exists. Okay, should be in the six area, which is good. Let's repeat this operation. Okay. Okay, this is not good because it's going this way. Uh, I think I know why. Be right back. Okay, so this is obviously because uh, the random tile from region is not working properly. But it, it will generate dinos only in the lower section of the map. Maybe, maybe I'll transform this into a method.
Ready? So, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna take a short break because I, I just need to take a nap before starting developing again. I'm too tired. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. <laughs>